Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the HTML5 lecture series uh, at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor, and we're going to talk about HTML5, but first we're going to talk about why browsers are so cool. Now, in order to do that, what we're going to start with is someone that's developing software to sell, okay? It might be some company that's trying to make a, uh, a new application for a word processor, or a spreadsheet, or it could be for a database system, or it could be a computer game. So, when that happens, you have programmers, here's some programmers, and they're pretty happy, they're programming away. Here he is sitting at his programming terminal and doing his program, and here's the other programmer, and he's, he's happy, he's sitting at his programming terminal, and he's programming away and so on. So we have a bunch of happy programmers that are developing the software. These folks are the software developers. Okay, and now you might be asking, well, what does this have to do with uh, why browsers are so cool? Bear with me, you'll see. Okay, these are the software developers. So they're there, da -da 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 -da, they're doing their stuff, and, and in the meanwhile, you know, this, this is costing money. Uh, for all that stuff to happen. And let's say, like I said before, that they're making a game. So, what they're going to do, if they use the traditional method of, of getting the game out and getting it sold, what they're going to do with their software that they have, the very first thing they're going to do, they're going to convert it, it to hardware. Now, does that, that's, I guess that sort of makes sense, right? And to convert it to hardware, what is it that they have to do? Well, they have to make a CD. So here's the CD that they made. They have to burn their game onto a CD. And when they do that, what do they have to do with the other side of the CD? Well, they have to print on it. Print on this side. So this is going to be in color, and it's going to look pretty neat. But what do they have to do with the CD now? Well, once they print it on this side, they have to put it into a plastic case. So they need a plastic case to hold the CD. And then when they put the, have the plastic case that's going to hold the CD, they also have to make uh, a, a cover for it, so they have to do some more printing. More printing. And then once they print that up, they have to have something to fold it in, put the CD in here. But then once they do that, they also need to take this and they need to put it into a box. Okay? So here's a box that they got to put it into. And it's got cardboard around it, but and it's got a lid where you can open it. You open the lid and you put this on the inside. But they also now have to put print on this too. So they have to print here in color. This, of course, has to be in color. And so they're printing on this, and they have to make sure that it's printed on all sides, telling you how great the game is, what have you. So they have to put this in the box, and in order to give it some volume, they also have a uh, user manual that nobody's going to read. So they have to print out a bunch of user manuals, too. And they're going to be, uh, the front cover will be in color. And then the interior is probably in black and white. So they have to print all this up, put this inside the box, and then put this inside the box with it, with the pretty colors there, what have you. And then, once they do that, they have to figure out how many of these are they going to make. Because the more you make, the cheaper it is to make each one. So let's just say that these guys are a little bit conservative, and they figure that they'll probably sell 10,000 of these cool games. So they make. They pay for 10,000 copies, and this is paid for up front. You can't it's pay for up front, maybe to borrow the money from their parents or something. But, so that's what they did. Now, when they have these 10,000 boxes, cases right here, what they have to do, they have to buy storage boxes, these big storage boxes like that, and they put about 20 of these in each of these big boxes. 
Okay, so there's the big boxes. They take, there's about 20 each of these in each, in each big box. So they have to pay, pay for this box. They have to pay for somebody to package the 20 because they're going to make 10,000 of these. And then with the boxes, what they have to do, they have to store them somewhere. So where are they going to store them? Well, you got this down, right? Okay, because we just started. All right, hold on. Here we go. Let me erase this. Don't forget they got the big boxes now. And they've got 20 of these in each of these big boxes. And now we're going to see what they do with their 10,000 copies of the world's greatest game ever made. They're going to store all this in what's called a warehouse. And here's the warehouse right here, where they're storing all other kinds of stuff that are going to be shipped. So this is a warehouse. Of course, the warehouse has to have a nice big door on it, nice big door, so the trucks can go in and out. Might have some windows, let some light in. Of course, they're going to have to be bars on the windows, so nobody steals all the stuff that's stored in this warehouse. Now, in order for the stuff that's in the warehouse to get out throughout the whole United States of the USA, and maybe foreign countries and what have you, here we are, here's Florida down here, we come around here and there's Mexico, and then up here, there's uh, Washington State, Washington, Oregon, California comes down here. And let's say your warehouse is right up here in Boston somewhere. Okay? So you're going to have to distribute this, this hardware that you have now. You're going to have to distribute this to all kinds of stores all over the United States. So that means that you're going to have to pay for distributors. And distributors generally have a truck or it could be a train. So... Here's the truck, here's the distributor's truck going chuggity, chuggity, chug. And he's going out here, chuggity, chuggity. And here's another distributor truck, and he's going to another place. So and, and he's got wheels on him, and he's going chuggity, chug. So somebody's paying to have all this stuff distributed. Somebody's paying to have all this stuff stored. You know who it is? It's you. <laughs> Nobody else is going to pay for it, plus, of course, your parents are helping you. So now what happens is that you got this idea about the distribution. Okay, we're just still beginning. So hold on to your hat. All right, I'm going to erase it. Let's see what else we got to do. Okay. How do I need That takes care of part of what's called a supply chain. S-U-P-P-L-Y-C-H-A. I am, because it's like a chain, you know? So we've had, we've seen a large part of that supply chain so far, haven't we? Yes. Now, now what happens is that the truck arrives, the truck arrives at the shopping center that has the, here's my truck, and this is my distributor, and there's my truck going chuck a chuck a chuck and uh, it arrives at the store, at the mall, and here's the mall, And here, right here, is the software store. So a box of these comes out to 20, and they dump it off the software store. And so what happens inside the software store is that a couple of employees inside the software store are take these out of the box, and they put them into a shelf somewhere. Put them in the shelf, along with about a gazillion other uh, really, really cool and neat computer games. So here they are, putting that on the shelf and they're shelving it. Okay, and then sort of the, almost the last part of the supply chain is when the person comes in to, to actually buy it. And here we are, da 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 There he is, there she is, the person we've been after all along, right there in front of us, the customer. And the customer is going to give money or a credit card to these people, right? Which goes to the people that own the store, period. That money that he gave doesn't go to you. It went right to the store. It doesn't say uh, computer game company on the credit card. It says the store's name is on this credit card. All right, so no big deal. That sort of business. We'll see how the money eventually dribbles back to you after... You pay everything else in the supply chain. Now, the customer goes home, 
and the customer is just anxious to try your new super duper computer game because he's heard so, so many great things about it and he's got it on his computer, there's his computer, and lo and behold, boink, oh, is he upset because he found a bug. He found a bug in the program. The reason why he found a bug in the program is because you were excited and anxious about to get your product out as quickly as you could because you had a lot of expenses in developing it and you realize all the supply chains change stuff. And all of a sudden now, your customers are finding bugs. So what do they do? They email you. And the email comes back to your company where, where your programmers are. And they realize, oh my goodness, that's what they say. They say, oh my goodness. They say an error. So what do they have to do? What do they have to do when there's an error? They have to start making patches, which some companies call updates. And then you can download these patches on the computer, and some of these patches might be a gazillion, gazillion bytes, which is, takes maybe two or three hours uh, to do the patching. So anyway, so here we go, and now the customer is upset, and some of the customers will take, will take the software, bring it back to the store, and want a refund. Now, that's not the end of the supply chain, because what's involved in the supply chain is getting the money. How does the money eventually get back to you? Well, the store people will pay you when they're ready. And the other thing, too, is that there's going to be some of the items that didn't sell. So they're supposed to return those back to you. Who pays for the shipping on the returns? You, not them. When do they return to you? When they are ready. How about the ones that were slightly damaged and what have you? Uh, those got to be returned. Okay, so now you're going to need, with all these stores that you've distributed through throughout the United States, say at least 200 stores, right? Okay, for your 10,000 copies, or maybe a thousand stores, and each store got 10 copies each. Now you're going to need an accounting firm to keep up with who's paid what and when was the, what, what's the money going to and how much more money is due. So you can begin to see that the traditional method, the traditional supply chain of selling, say, an application like a computer game really is expensive and time consuming and you don't get much money off it. So the next time you walk into a store and you see software in a case for sale, have pity on those poor people because unless they're really, really a big, big company, they're not going to get much money back and it's going to take a long time for the money to get back to them. So, all right, what does this have to do with a browser? Here's what it has to do. What we're going to do is we're going to change the supply chain. We're going to change the supply chain. And here's how we're going to change the supply chain. We're going to make it so that why browsers are so cool. We're going to start with our programmers again. Here's our programmers. They're programming away, creating the game. We've given them a new chance. Okay. Of course, they're happy because they have a new chance, and programmers always like new chances. So there they are. They're, they're programming away. And now what they're going to do with the software, they are not going to convert it to hardware. Do not convert software to hardware. What they're going to do, they're going to take the software that they made and they're going to put it on a big computer that they own called a server. The game is now on here. And what they're going to do, they're going to allow people to download the game with a browser. 
So this might be Google Chrome, it could be Internet Explorer, it could be Firefox. And now what happens is that it goes right from the developer to the browser, right to the customer. And here, here's my happy customer. And what happens is that when my happy customer finds a bug and e emails these people, all they have to do is make the change in the game and now it's not a problem anymore. Look at the supply chain now. And how does this guy pay for the game? Through the browser. He pays for the game through the browser. And when do these people get their money? Right away. So why are browsers so cool? This is one reason. And I'll show you other reasons why browser are so, browsers are so cool. And I'll also show you other reasons why HTML5 makes the browsers the coolest of the cool of the cool. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Thanks for attending.